Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my TBR reading vlog for March. Okay, so here are my six books. Now, if you saw my TBR Madness video, you know that I started one of these. I started where the crawdads sing. It's not my favorite so far, but I am gonna be continuing it in this so, video. The others are Second Chance Summer, a love-inspired book, the Safe Place, The Thursday Murder Club. I'm uncertain about this one, but so many people love it. I'm just not really a mystery person, but some of you guys have said that you're the same way, but you enjoyed this one, so hopefully I will too. Then we've got Water for Elephants, which I'm also uncertain about. Like I said, where the crawdads sing. And finally, The Hotel Nantucket. I'm not convinced about this one at all, but I will try it. So we've got six books. I would love to finish this as quickly as possible. Would I love to actually be able to accomplish reading all of these? Yes, I would. Chances are we're gonna DNF something. <laughs> Half of the videos that I post are like, eight books, DNFing three of them. Or <laughs> That's a very common um, theme. Now, if you've seen my past TBR reading vlogs this year, you know that I have prompts in this little mug and I left out the prompts from last month's TBR just so I'm not getting the same thing. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and choose whatever this prompt is. I will choose the book that matches it the best. First word in alphabetical order. I'm gonna go ahead without looking, I'm gonna say that like the or a uh, or whatever, all of those articles count. So let's see, we've got the safe space, safe place, second chance summer is before that. That one's after, that one's after, that one's after, and oh, it's the Hotel Nantucket. I was thinking it was Hotel Nantucket. Okay, so Second Chance Summer is the winner. Today could not be less summery. It's like a gray, kind of dreary, a little bit chilly day. But we're gonna have some summer vibes, <laughs> so that'll be fun. Plus it's a pretty short one and it's a Christian book, so I'm looking forward to getting into this. In light of this book, if you would leave a seashell emoji. I'm like four chapters from the end, but I have been trying to motivate myself all day to read and I'm just not feeling it. This book overall is fine. It's gonna probably be like three stars, but it's not like riveting. And the chapters are kind of long, even though the book itself is small and kind of short. And there are good quotes as you can maybe see from the tabs. Yeah, there you go. It's been not riveting, but good. It's fine. It's like a solid three stars so far, but I'm going to try to finish this. I almost thought about rating this lower at a two stars because the last few chapters I really was just skimming and not super engaged. But it's a fine story. It's cute. Good, clean romance read. Summary vibes for most of it. Um, and by that I mean like they're at the beach. That's about it. Three stars. On to the next book. Longest title. Does that mean by words or by letters? I don't know. I'm gonna go with by letters. The safe place has 12, 21, 17 for water for elephants, 18, 20, 17 for 17 for the Hotel Nantucket. So the longest one is the third is Thursday Murder Club with 21 letters. I'm nervous about this because I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I didn't even make it through the 20 pages. This writing style is what's getting to me. I cannot follow it, <laughs> I don't know. It's just not engaging to me. And judging by that and the fact that I don't like mystery type books in general, 
I just don't think that I'm gonna make it through this whole book. I just don't care. And I'm so sorry because I know a lot of people love this series and love this book, but I'm just not gonna be one of them. I don't want it to be like soft DNFs or whatever, but that one, I just know that I'm not going to like this. So it's a DNF for like, for good. Okay, next up is smallest copy. Obviously that was smallest. This is second smallest. Let's go. This is another one I'm uncertain about because it wasn't on my Goodreads, but I picked it up at a little free library. It's a thriller. I don't know. We shall see. I'll try it. <laughs> okay. I like it so far. I read the prologue in the first chapter. There was a little bit of language and some kind of cross comments, but like I've said before, I have a little bit higher tolerance if it's a thriller. So we'll see. As long as it's not distracting from the plot, I should be okay, but I'm gonna keep going. Did I tell you guys to leave an emoji yet in this video? If not, leave like something related to swimming because of this color. No, but if you could have seen my face at the scene that I just read a few chapters ago, it's not, okay, I don't even know how to explain it. It's not open door but you're very well aware of what's going on with the characters involved. It's just weird. And it's one of those things where I'm continuing to read because I want to know what happens. Like, I'm actually interested enough in the plot. Like, I want to know what is the deal with these crazy people because every single one of them has issues. Like, they're all messed up. It's not like one or the other. It's like all of them... All of them are problematic. <laughs> when you need to get back to reading, but you just watched Destiny's Disney video, and now I need to go to Disney immediately. The uh, $2 in my bank account would say otherwise, but... <laughs> All I'm saying is I knew it. Okay, this is odd and concerning, but actually a really good read. I think I'm going to give it four stars. I, I like how it ended. I was concerned there for a minute. I can't really say anything without spoiling. Do I recommend this book? I mean, honestly... Kind of yes, if you can look past the fact that there is a lot of language and there's a really odd, odd scene. me, I feel like this is very much like a mixture of three books. It reminds me in certain aspects of one of my favorite books, Behind Closed Doors, certain aspects of The Silent Patient, and certain aspects of Hidden Pictures. And I'm not gonna like go into what parts of each of those books it reminds me of, but it's kind of like a mixture of all three of those. Pretty interesting. I did call the big plot twist. I knew it, which I don't love when that happens. Like, it's fine. Um, I, I mean, I like to figure it out, but in this case, I think I would have liked it better if I had just been like, I think I'm going to give it four stars. I think it was pretty good. If it didn't have all the cringy stuff that I don't like, it could have been five stars. Probably not quite there, but it was good. 
four stars. Let's see what we got next. Oops. How's that say? Mood read? Yes! Okay. I am not super engaged. What I like about it is it's that same, like, Great Depression time. And so in my mind, I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's the same time as Elsa and her family fighting against the Texas heat. <laughs> that's what I keep thinking about. But that's not really a reason to read this book. The content so far, so much language, um, many times using God's name in vain. And then the scene that I just read at the circus, I was reading it and then I was like, surely I can skip over this. And I just, in case you missed that, I just took my bookmark out. I don't want to read that kind of stuff. Now it's time to choose the next book because that's just going to be a no from me. Um, the last two are Where the Crawdads Sing and The Hotel Nantucket, which I'm already envisioning the Hotel Nantucket could be a DNF as well. Um, and Where the Crawdads Sing, I wasn't loving, but I am continuing. Well, that's interesting. Another mood read works for me. Part of me is like, should I try the Hotel Nantucket and see if it is going to be a, D a DNF or if I'm going to read it and then leave Where the Crawdads Sing for last? Or do I get back to Where the Crawdads Sing and then chance this one being a DNF? I think, based on what I just explained to you guys or just shared my dilemma with you, I think I would prefer to try this, see if it is going to be a DNF or if it's going to be something that I read, and then we'll finish off with the continuation of Where the Crawdads Sing. Okay, there is a part where let's just say girlfriend finds out boyfriend is sending messages with someone else. I'm not going to get specific. You guys know what I'm talking about. I just skipped over that part because it's like important to know that it happened in the story, but you don't need to read the details to like get the point you know what i mean so i skipped over that but i'm still continuing to read because it's not like the main point of the story is this hotel and they're trying to get like a five star type review from this person who does not give hotels five stars so that's what's going on so i already far. have tabbed some quotes so okay made the idiotic mistake of getting on facebook in between <laughs> reading sessions and now I just need a truth break. So I'm going to read in Seven Mile Miracle, which I've not read. Well, I've read on Sunday mornings, but I've not been reading like every day like I was. So I'm going to try to read a couple sections of this because it is all about um, the last words of Jesus, which means that this week is perfect to read it. So that's what I'm going to do. Just take a little break. For my TBR. This is technically still my TBR, it's just not my TBR game. But yeah, I'm gonna do that because people be testing me. Let me be very clear when I say this. I'm aware that this is not the Bible. However, reading biblical truth just changes everything. And that's all I have to say about that because it's very easy to get upset by lies and frustrated but being reminded of the truth god always brings peace in that situation and i'm very grateful for that anyway i guess now i might be ready to continue on i am i guess about halfway through honestly making such good progress in this although i would like to finish it faster but I feel like it, it has been flying by. The chapters are a little bit longer than I usually like, but they go really quickly. I never would have thought that I would, honestly, I never would have thought that I would enjoy this author's work. It just did not seem like anything that would appeal to me at all. And in full disclosure, there are a lot of suggestive comments and innuendos throughout it. So I don't love that part, but I just, I want to like make sure that you know that just to be aware. And there have been some paragraphs that seemed like they were going to be open door that I just skipped over. So I can't tell you if they were or they weren't. But the storyline, the plot, the characters, and the atmosphere is just so much better than I thought that it was going to be. 
and I'm thinking back to when I did my little free library video where I picked this up. I remember saying I just felt like I was supposed to take this book and I didn't know why. We have a ton of interest in reading this author's work, but this book wanted me to get it. I can't explain. And so I just think that that is so cool um, to think back on because it's almost like, I don't know if you get this feeling, maybe I'm the only one, but sometimes I just feel books that are supposed to be mine and that I end up loving, which is so weird. Like The Four Winds, I felt the same way. There was a nonfiction that I felt the same way. And it does not happen with every book. In fact, it happens with very few books, but I love that feeling. It also happened with The Warsaw Orphan, which I am like dying to get back into, but it's not part of this video. Um, hopefully in a couple videos, I will get back to that one and you guys will see that. But anyway, I just wanted to say I am surprised but I am enjoying this. It's a very interesting and quick moving story. It does have, I guess, like you could say a paranormal element, but not in like a creepy way that I would have an issue with, more like a Casper the Friendly Ghost Character way. Grace is like our Casper the Friendly Ghost person. And it's like, she's not one of the, I guess she is one of the main characters, but like you're rooting for her, even though it's not really, she's, <sighs> It's hard to explain, but I am enjoying it. And I actually do recommend trying this so far. I'm only halfway through. It could take a downhill turn. I don't know. I hope it doesn't though, but this has been so fun and interesting. So I'm going to get back to reading, but I just thought that I would update you so I don't forget all of the thoughts of things. Okay, that was a little concerning for a minute, but it turned out very well. I really enjoyed this book. I am unironically and ironically gonna give it four stars. I've really, really enjoyed this. The only other book of hers that I am interested in right now is, I think it's called The Five Star Weekend or something like that. I would like to try that one. I never thought that I was going to like this. I really thought I was going to DNF it. Despite the PC stuff and the stuff that I talked about earlier, other than that, it could have easily been, well, almost five stars. There were some parts where I was zoning out, and usually if that happens for me with a book, then I can't rate it five stars, but definitely a solid four. Like, there's so many details in here that I would love to go back and reread knowing even though there are parts of it that I kind of knew already and I was really happy to be right about. There are parts that I was really surprised by, so fun times. I actually do recommend this book if you don't mind to like <laughs> skip over problematic parts, which really aren't. They're frequent, but not too much. I don't know how to explain it. For me, it was not taking away from the plot and I enjoyed it. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling and the last book is where the crawdads sing, but I will probably get to that tomorrow. Just getting ready to go do a little bit, a little free library, hauling and hauling, theoretically, potentially. Only book that I'm keeping from my TBR is this one and where the crawdads sing because I haven't finished it yet, but I just thought I would point that out that this is the only one I'm holding on to. So there's that.
successfully read 11 pages today. And by successfully, I mean I was barely paying attention. Although there were parts that I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm kind of struggling and I'm a little bit of a mess right now, but I'm <sighs> not loving this. I wish that the Hotel Nantucket had been my last book. I'm still trying, okay? I'm still trying. I really, really hate to do this because I've been sitting here trying to read this book for the last six hours and gotten very little progress. So much of it is there are open door parts. It's talking about just, it's just talking about that. I don't even know. I haven't even been paying enough attention to know if she's like a teenager or a young adult, but that's all it's talking about at this point. Page after page. I cannot handle it and I don't really care enough to finish it. So as you can see, I'm flipping to the end right now. So I wanna know what happens, but I'm DNFing this. I hope you guys aren't gonna be mad at me, but I just can't do this. So, yep, that's pretty much what I thought. <laughs> oh, cool. See, that's an interesting tidbit. This is way more interesting reading it backwards. Yeah, like I don't care to read this whole blasted thing <laughs> to get to this. I feel like I get the main point. I'm gonna look up spoilers online, but I'm DNFing because I just don't have the patience and I'm. it's not like I'm enjoying it. Unfortunately, sorry if you love that book. It's just, no. I feel like it's one of those books that like everyone's read, but that's not a good enough reason for me to continue when I'm bored and I want to get into some other reading and videos. And there are so many books over there that I want to get back to. So I think that's going to be it.